when we see inside your character's house, and yeah. I saw that enormous drum kit, yeah. I thought that is you all over. How much? Yeah. It must have really sucked going to work every day. Yeah. It was uh, it was a joy actually, but but we did actually um, we did actually film a scene where Jack plays the drums. And I learned, uh, I learned a drum solo and I played it over and over again and I was really pleased with it. But they just thought tonally it was kind of at odds with where the show was at that, at that time. So that, that's been cut from the show, sadly. But I almost think it's funnier that Jack's bought this huge drum kit and never plays it. I, I think it kind of fits in with his personality a bit more, that he's got all this money. He, he, he's, he's blowing money on these big purchases that he's got no real aptitude for or use for. So I think to, to not see him play it is more Jack. And it is a very different character for you in many ways. I mean, I'm not a fan of comparisons because they always break down at some point, but, but it was like you were channeling both Simon Pegg and, uh, you know, at the, and at, the sa at the same time. It was, it was great to watch. Well, thanks very much. I, I just wanted to be a character that... Because it's a very serious show, lots of lots of big serious themes. I sort of wanted to create a character where when he came on the screen, the audience could think, oh, we're going to have a bit of a break now. We're going to have a bit of a break from some of the most serious stuff and, and just kind of lighten it up a bit. And, and yeah, it was... Because um, uh, when you see a lot of sci-fi stuff, especially stuff set in the future, you wonder what year people stop saying funny things. It's about, oh, this is the future, nobody's being funny anymore. But I think the humorous elements in, in our adaptation make it a much more human and much more kind of realistic prospect. While it's ostensibly sci-fi, yeah. the stories are very human yeah, totally. and the responses are very very genuine and all, come across as very genuine and authentic. Well, that's how it should be, really. You have to, you have to create credible characters because unless you care about the people at the centre of it, then the, st then the stakes and the, and the, the threat doesn't really matter. You, you have to know about the consequences and what that means at a human level. And David and Dan have already have always been very good at that. In terms of White Walkers in Game of Thrones, we had to care about the characters for that threat to make any sense. So they always prioritise the characters and then build the, the wider consequences around them. And they did manage to get you back in fur and leather at one point. Oh, yeah, yeah it's, it's in my contract. If there's, if there's no fur and leather, I'm essentially not interested. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, you guys! <laughs> hey you guys! Hey, 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 that's what they all say. Hey you guys! Hey you guys!